Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Excellent. So my first question, and all my questions are mainly about your book Dice World, just because I thought, you know, it's a very fun book to read and it would be great for the blog. So just to let you know. Sure. So obviously the easiest question, or probably the the most obvious question, is why, what motivated you to write this book? I think it's because I've always been fascinated by probability, really ever since I was at school, and uh, studied maths at university and that kind of thing, and the probability side of it always really interested me. And it, particularly because it's something that kind of baffles people, that it, it's counterintuitive, uh, it runs against common sense, which I always think is some of the most fun bits uh, of science and maths. So. It, that's really it. it. It was looking at the ways that probability and randomness affect our lives was something that I really wanted to write about. Great. And as far as, you know, you use multiple mathematical models and different graphs and stuff in the book to show, you know, randomness and stuff like that. I'm curious, did you find it hard to do that without losing your reader? Or was there a certain balance that you felt you had to attain to make sure you know, the story wasn't lost on your audience? Yeah, I think you always have to be careful. You know, I, I mostly write about fairly obscure physics or maths. And as such, you've always got to be a, a little bit careful about making sure it is approachable. I mean, I, really in the book, there's, only, there's one little bit where I, I talk about Bayes' theorem, uh, which is involves a little bit uh, of actual equations being in there. But I also give people a chance to skip over that because you don't really need it. It's just there if, if you're interested. But mostly it's something you can get away with uh, by being descriptive, by giving examples, really by putting things into context and, and giving it a narrative. So it's not just you know, here's a set of facts, it's putting it into some story that people can associate with and get their head around. And was it hard, since this book is focused a lot on randomness, was it really hard to explain what randomness is in a scientific sense? Well, it's certainly something we struggle with. If you ask somebody just to name a series of random numbers, I was tempted to just ask you for a moment, but I thought that'd be unfair. If you ask somebody that, the series of numbers they come up with will pretty well certainly not be like a set of random numbers. Random numbers aren't really quite the way we expect them to be. For example, people don't repeat numbers often enough when they try to come up with a, a random set of numbers, because uh, it's perfectly possible in a string of random numbers to come up with, say, five, 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 five in a row, because randomness isn't, hasn't got a memory. It isn't looking back and saying, oh, this is what happened before. It's literally choosing from the set that's available, picking out something random each time. So it's something that we do struggle to get our head around. Uh, and that's why, for instance, people come up with ideas like, you know, a hot hand where somebody's supposed to be, you know, having a series of great uh, events in basketball or whatever, that what we see as random uh, often isn't, and what actually is random, we often see as not being. So it's, it's, it's a really interesting topic. That, that's one of the reasons I wanted to write about it. Sure. And so what was your favorite thing to write about for this book as far as finding things to research, chapters to write, that sort of thing? That's a difficult one. I, oh, what could I pin it down to? I think in some ways it's the, the kind of almost paradoxes that, that sometimes arise from randomness. So there's quite a well-known uh, thing called the Monty Hall problem which was based on a, a game show from the 1960s, a TV game show, in which people are asked to choose between three doors. And the two of them have a goat behind them, one has a car behind it, and you get what you, what you choose without seeing anything. And somebody chooses a door, and then the host, Monty Hall, says, OK, I'll open a door and show you what's behind it, and he shows them a goat. So they've eliminated one door, so you're down to two doors. One's a goat, one's a car. And what people are basically asked is, should we stick with the door we chose originally? Should we change our choice? And the fascinating thing is most people think, well, there's two doors left, one with a car, one with a goat, it's 50-50, there's really no point in moving. But actually, if you change your choice to the other door, then you're at twice as likely to win as you would otherwise. And this problem is so simple, and yet it, is, it really twists people's mind. Uh, when it was 
brought up in Parade magazine it was in the 80s. There was a whole string of PhDs who wrote in saying that the, the, the woman who wrote the article was wrong with this, that she was an idiot. She got it totally wrong. But actually, it really does work. And it's these kind of things that just bend your mind that I really enjoy. Sure. That totally makes sense. So my last question for you, and then we'll wrap up, is kind of an overall broad question, but why do you think it's important for people to know about the randomness of the universe or the randomness of the world they live in? I think it's partly because if we don't get a, a feel for that, then we blame or we look for something to blame where there isn't necessarily anybody or anything to blame you know we say why me why us why did this happen and we're always looking for a scapegoat we're looking for somebody somebody and something to blame and obviously sometimes things are caused by somebody something has happened intentionally but the fact is some things are totally random and so one example i give in the book is that people often w would blame something like a, a phone mast in fact we, we're seeing this at the moment that 5g phone masts are being blamed by some uh, for uh, the virus outbreak, which is, is mind-bogglingly strange, because we desperately want to find a cause. We want to find a way of linking things together. And sometimes things just are random. You get clusters of events happening together, and there's no reason why they're together. That's just what randomness is like. And so I think having an understanding of that can help us deal with the world around us, because we are faced with random problems. We're, we're faced with things that, that happen without necessarily having an easily identified cause. And I hope it will help people both to understand what's happening better and actually just to enjoy this whole business of, of science and maths a little bit more.